In the first part of this video, we looked at numbers one to five of the top 10 rules you need to be living by as the CEO of your own small business, as a CEO entrepreneur. And in this part, we're going to be looking at number six to 10. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. Hit it. Very, very quick recap before we get on to number six. In the past video, what we talked about was decision, not precision, top down, not bottom up, relinquish control to take control, strategy, plan, execute in that order. And finally, budget, forecast and ensure co positive cash flow. Number six is delegate to increase capacity. Now, this one is a really, really important one. And I know that it's actually quite similar to the relinquish control one, but it's actually slightly different. There are subtle differences here because sometimes delegating out is not the same as actually relinquishing control. So you need to split them together. You can actually delegate tasks, but still maintain complete control. Whereas actually what we are talking about here right now is actually delegating tasks out in general. So when you're delegating tasks out, make sure that you've got the right systems and processes in place first before you actually delegate it out. Because if you delegate these things out and we know we're already control freaks and we don't actually specify exactly what kind of standards they need to be done in and how repet like how we can actually maintain consistent quality and output and have all of these standards and the processes, then we're not going to get it back in the way that we want it because everyone is different and everyone approaches the way that they do things completely differently. That's a fact. So how are we going to really imagine how we're going to get the same results, the same standards, the same consistency, whether you give it to this person or that person, even between two people, it's going to be different. So if you're going to maintain consistent quality in front of your clients as a business, you need to make sure that you've got the right systems and processes in place first. So make sure that you have those, but then delegate out. You need to delegate tasks. You, in general, you should be delegating as much as possible so that you can focus working on your business. That's number six. Let's get on to number seven. So number seven is simplify, measure and optimize. We've just been talking about systems and processes here, and we do not want to overcomplicate things. We do not want to complicate things, let alone overcomplicate things. What we're trying to do here, we're not trying to be better than other people. We're not trying to show off. We're not trying to sort of say that we're more smart or clever than other people. We want to keep things simple so that they can be copied and repeated consistently. Because if you make things any more complicated than they need to be, people are just not going to go through it and they're just going to try and take shortcuts and it's not going to be of the same standards that you want them to be. But also part of actually you growing and really scaling your business is making sure that you've optimized inside your processes because then it becomes a lot cheaper for you and you're not wasting or leaking a lot of money. Let's follow the KISS principle here, you know, keep it simple, stupid or silly or whatever the word is. So that's what you want to be doing. You really want to be able to simplify and then you want to be able to measure because you really want to be able to understand your metrics. How good or how well or badly is this process actually performing? And is it getting the right results that we want? And then you're continuously optimizing. So simplify, measure, optimize. One of the things that you should be looking at really inside your business to make sure that you stay on top of all of that good stuff. Let's go on to number eight. Number eight is manage risk, but learn when things go wrong. Now, it's really important for us to be able to manage risk because we're not living in a perfect world, as we've said, and things will inevitably go wrong at some stage. And what you need to be doing is making sure that you've got a plan A and a plan B and potentially a plan C for when things go wrong. And you've already thought about it before they actually do. Sometimes you're going to get hit by something way left field that you've just never thought of before. And in those scenarios, what you need to be doing is you need to say, right, how can I learn from this so that it doesn't happen again? And also, is it potentially possible for us to really turn this potential thing that's happened badly into an opportunity? Can we turn these obstacles into opportunities? And that's the mindset that you should be having inside your business, trying to learn from when things go wrong. Don't sit there and say, oh no, this has gone wrong. The end. That's not going to be the best way for you to really grow and scale your business. Understanding that we need to make sure that we manage risk, though. I'm not telling you to go and have a roller coaster ride and go up and down inside your business, even though roller coasters are actually incredibly managed for risk because they are superbly calculated. 
But what I am saying is making sure that you've thought about things strategically first and you've tried to minimize risk as much as possible for when things go wrong in your business because you've already thought of them way ahead of schedule. And if they do happen, you've already got a plan B for them and a contingency. That's what you should be doing. But when things happen and they go wrong and they will, and you didn't expect them, try and learn from them and try and see how you can turn that into an opportunity. That's number eight. Let's get on to number nine. Number nine is a quick one. It's create repeatable processes for when things go right. You're making decisions, not precision. So there are times where things will go right and you're trying to maximize those and, and optimize them and simplify. And there are times for when things go wrong. But when you found something that goes right, make sure that you create a repeatable process for it. Really log down and say, step one, I did this. Step two, I did this. Step three, they did that. And we didn't do this until we this happened. And then that happened after that. And then what you go through and you say, is there a way that we can simplify? Is there a way that we can measure that this process always gives us the results that we want? Or potentially, can we optimize it so that it can give us a better result? And that links back down to making sure that you're simplifying, measuring and optimizing. So all of these are tied together in one way or another, as you can see. But this one is really about when things go right, make sure that you create a repeatable process for it. That's number nine. Let's get on to the final one, number 10. The final one, is patience and discipline, not fear and greed. Things, when you're growing business, it takes time. And what we don't want us to be doing, and we don't want you to be doing as well, is really running on emotion. There are a lot of times where I've seen businesses fail catastrophically, and they're doing everything else right, everything else, all of these like top nine that we've just spoken about and more. Yet they are running their businesses on emotions. They're running them out of fear that things might go wrong and they get paralyzed by making the right decisions and taking like calculated risks. Or they have greed because they see something works once and they go all in on that. And again, they haven't managed their risks. What we want to be doing is really trying to make calculated guesses, really smart calculated guesses on where you would think your business is heading and what choices that you're going to have to make along those ways and what happens when things go wrong and what happens when things go right. But also on top of that, where you're actually making these calculated guesses, it's not just about the emotions. It's also about the patience because it really takes a lot of discipline to be able to grow and scale a business and things do not happen overnight. All of these overnight successes you've heard about of these other businesses where they said, oh, you know, we were all of a sudden they just jumped out of nowhere and they became an overnight success. That was probably 10 years in the making because they probably tried a whole bunch of things that went wrong and they tried a whole bunch of things that, you know, took time and it builds and it builds and then it's kind of an exponential curve at the end where things really catapult. So you need to be patient, you need to be disciplined and you need to make sure that you're running on calculated guesses, not out of fear or greed. That's number 10. And that was the list of top 10 rules that you should be doing inside your business so that you're actually working on it as a business owner and as a CEO entrepreneur. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Because everyone is different and everyone has different experiences and everyone approaches, is, approaches, sorry. And everyone approaches, approaches, is, I can't even talk about approaches. Is, can't talk, right. And everyone approaches is, 